Okay, so in this second component, we're going to look at using Carrot um, to as a tool for um, for your, uh, uh, for for undertaking machine learning in in R. Okay, so why use Carrot? There are other options. So I like Carrot for a couple reasons. Um, it allows you to implement a variety of machine learning methods using a common syntax. So there's lots of different packages in R that implement different machine learning algorithms. So for example, SVM is implemented like E1071 and Kern Lab. Random Forest is implemented by Ranger and Random Forest. Um, so um, if you want to use each of those packages separately, they're all going to work slightly differently. Um, so you, it's not very consistent. So um, what Carrot basically does is it acts as a wrapper that allows you to um, execute a wide variety of, of algorithms from different packages using common syntax. So it's really simple to experiment with a bunch of different algorithms. Um, it also has um, um, functions and whatnot available for optimizing hyperparameters, pre-processing data such as normalizing, center and scaling, creating principal components. Um, there's uh, tools are for validating your model with assessment metrics and things like a confusion matrix. So it's really robust, it's really standardized, and um, you can get really clean reproducible results. So that's why we're going to look at Carrot, but again, there are other options. Um, it should be noted that Carrot's kind of being phased out and being superseded by tidy models. So if you're familiar with the tidyverse within ArcGIS, Basically, the idea here is that um, there's it's a common philosophy uh, for like writing code and, and using common syntax for doing data analytics and and data science in R. So basically, the t tidy models isn't one package. Instead, it's a set of packages that tries to bring machine learning into the into the tidyverse. So it uses similar syntax to uh, packages such as like dplyr and like ggplot2 um, that you that you may be familiar with. Um, so this is again not just one package but a set of packages um, that have different uses within kind of the ecosystem. So for example parsnips is used to define models um, using common syntax um, so it allows you to experiment with a lot of different algorithms. Um, yardstick is used to apply a, um, model validation and assessment metrics. Tuning is for hyperparameter tuning. R sample is for setting up like training and validation splits or um, um, f uh, folds for like cross validation. Recipes allows you to create like workflows and, and pre processing chains. Um, so I'm going to still show you Carrot initially because I, um, it's really matured, so it's um, it's easy to use. It's kind of stabilized, so I think it's worth discussing. But eventually, it will be replaced by tidy models. So I have added a video to the end of this, and also some example modules in the course uh, with some real data and code um, associated with tidy models. So you will see some examples of that later. Okay, so again, one of the benefits of using Carrot is that a wide variety of models can be implemented um, using common syntax. So if you go to this link here, um, this lists out a bunch of different models um, that you can run through Carrot. Um, so there's lots of options. So for, you can do simple things like linear regression, logistic regression, to more complicated methods like generalized additive models, um, to your typical machine learning stuff like SVMs, random forests, boosted decision trees, decision trees. Um, so there's lots of options. Note that one option that really isn't integrated into this is deep learning. Part of that's because it's newer and part of it's because the workflow is just different. Um, there's different tools for that. But for your common machine learning methods, there's tons of options within Carrot. Uh, what we're going to look at as examples in this course predominantly is uh, k-nearest neighbor, and we'll use the KNN method for that. Uh, decision trees using our part. Um, random forest using ranger or random forest. And then um, um, SVM radials, so support vector machines using a radial basis function corner, uh, kernel, and that'll be with the SVM radial um, option, which allows you to connect to Kern Lab. But again, these are just a subset of a large number of models that you can run. So if, for, after going through this process and seeing how we use these types of models, 
um, you should be able to implement other models fairly easily. So here's just a few examples of some other models. So C5.0, Adaboost, those are for doing different implementations of boosted decision trees. XGB tree is for extreme gradient boosting decision trees. GAM, generalized additive models. GAM boost is boosted generalized additive models. Here's LM for simple linear regression and GLM for generalized linear models, which you can use to apply logistic regression. So again, if you use a certain method that we're not really talking about here and you want to apply that in Carrot, have a look at this link um, and see how you would apply that specific method. If you're wondering why I chose these methods, uh, the main reason was because these are some of the most common methods that we use in um, in like remote sensing and you know it's geospatial science to make predictions in general. Um, you know, ra random force and support vector machines have come be kind of become the de facto methods. Um, but you could obviously argue for using or experimenting with different methods. But again, since Carrot is so sp consistent, um, it doesn't actually matter a whole lot because you can still implement this code. Um, more new algorithms without changing a whole lot. Um, just as a side note, there are obviously other environments for you to apply machine learning and you know the research kind of pipelines uh, to implement the, the these techniques. So again, if you're working in R, I highly recommend Carrot because it's consistent. If you're a Python user, generally people use Scikit-Learn. Um, so that's the, the learning, the machine learning environment that sets on top of SciPy and NumPy um, in Python. Um, we do cover that in some of our other courses, but since this is a, an R class, we're not covering it here. Um, but that's the most common Python environment. There's this tool called, called Weka, which is um, generally um, more of a toy. I mean, you wouldn't really use this generally for like large scale production or research but it is a pretty easy way to implement a wide variety of algorithms. And then more recently, there's been sets of tools developed, developed for doing uh, deep learning specifically. So examples include Keras and TensorFlow and PyTorch, which I've linked here. Again, we're not talking about deep learning in this course, um, but I did want to note that that's, there are kind of separate environments for that. Okay, so here's an example of two ways to specify or train a model using caret. Okay, so in the first example here, um, we're using the train function. That's the case in both. So this is the function from caret that allows you to train a model. So to train a model, you basically have to provide a formula. So in this example, we're predicting the class column. So this is like coming from a data frame or a table and we're predicting it using all of the other columns in the table. This uh, tilde, the tilde dot is a shorthand for all other columns. And then we're telling it where what our data set is. So this is coming from this train object, which is you know, going to be a data frame or table or whatever. The method is where you specify the model that you want to train. Um, so here we're using our part uh, to train a, deci a single decision tree. Then I specify some pre-processing. We're going to center and scale all the predictor variables. And then also we have some defined training controls for the like tuning and training process. And we'll talk about this stuff later. The key thing here is this. So basically a formula, what you're wanting to predict with, and what you're predicting it with. Again, this is just shorthand for all other columns. The data that you're using, so your training data, and the method that you want to train. Okay, and so this is common like formula syntax in R, right? So if you do like a linear model, for example, using the LM function, this would be the same thing. So data, or sorry, the formula of the data. Okay, um, another way that you can specify models, and instead of using this formula-based method, you can actually call the columns, right? So here I'm calling the Y variable. I'm saying that is the first column in the train uh, you know, data frame or object or whatever. And um, then the x objects or the independent variables or predictor variables are column two through all the columns. So two through the number of columns in the data set. And again, other than that, it's the same. So specify the, the method. So here we're doing a decision tree. Um, yeah. So note here we didn't have to define a da data because that's just part of this call. Um, again, if you're, not if you're still new to R, um, this is an indexing, right? So the first... Um, 
the first index is the row and the second is the column. So if we do blank comma, that means all the rows and then this is the first column. So all the rows, just the first column. And then this is basically all the rows and then all the other columns, two through number of columns is just the number of columns in the table, so it will just be two through however many columns that there are. I generally prefer to use this type of syntax, um, especially if I have a lot of predictor variables or I want to be able to subset out. You know, with this type of syntax, you can have like non-contiguous columns be selected or partitioned out, um, but either is really fine. It's whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay, and then once you've trained a model, we generally predict using the um, predict function, right? So um, the predict function, how that works, is you call the model, this is a train model object, and then the new data that you want to predict to. So this would be an example for predicting to like a new table. Generally the rule is um, that you need to have in that table all the predictor, the same predictor variables and they have to have the same names. So for example, the same column names in the data frame. There are also tools for predicting not just the tables, but back to raster grids. And in this context, basically every cell or location is treated as like a row in a table. So where each each individual band or each individual, each individual layer is one of the columns or one of the predictor variables. So here we basically feed it the new data. For some reason, these are reversed. That's just how it's written. So model, then new data, and here it's, it's new data model. Um, this progress equals window, that allows you to generate a progress window. Um, some of this, sometimes this can take a while, so you might just want to make sure that it's working. Um, it, um, this override equals true basically means that if, if this predict.img file already exists, then it can write over it. Um, it may, you may get an error if like that file's already open, like in your GIS software, so you should probably close it first if you're going to try to write over it. Um, again, with the raster data, similar to a table, you're going to have to have the band names be the same as the, as the predictor variable name, so it knows how, what band matches with which predictor variable. However, it's generally okay if they're in a different order or if there's some like ants, extra bands. Um, if you don't include all the predictor variables in the stack, it's going to fail because it needs all the predictor variables um, to, uh, to apply the model. Um, in R, I've generally had the best luck both reading and writing either TIFF files or image files. Um, generally, TIFF is my go-to file format. Um, so um, there's obviously other options, but I generally prefer TIFF or image format for input-output of rasters. Note, to, too, that um, when you write to a file, if you don't specify the full file path, it's going to write to the default like working directory. So if you didn't want to write to the working directory, you would want to put in the, put in the full file path there. But I'm okay with, in this case, it just writing to the working directory. Um, if you're trying to write out to a table, um, there are lots of options. So for example, you can write out to a CSV file using write.csv uh, from base R. Um, another really useful package is the foreign package, and it has this write.dbf uh, function that allows you to write out to a database file, and those generally open well in, say, GIS software or like, um, like a spreadsheet software like Excel or something. So I generally either write out to CSV or to, to like a database file, but obviously there are other options. And again, unless you specify another directory, it's going to, by default, write out to the working directory. Okay, so this video was a little shorter, um, but we're just going to go ahead and stop here. In the third video, we're going to look at using uh, machine learning, some different machine learning alg algorithms that are implemented um, in R that you can use through Carrot.